Greetings friends, David Marks here with a new tutorial for you on how to edit RAW files on your smartphone or tablet using Snapseed from Google. Before we get started though, I need to warn you that RAW image processing is math intensive stuff. If you're working with an older phone or tablet, then your device might not support this ability or it might be painfully slow. With that warning out of the way, let me show you some image processing magic. To get us started, I'm going to tap here on the big plus in the middle of the screen to open up a new image. Next, I'm going to tap on this DNG file to open it into Snapseed's RAW editing window. I don't want to get bogged down in the technical details of the RAW versus JPEG file format debate right now. But just so you know, if your photo's extension ends with the letters .dng, then that's a RAW file. And since Snapseed realizes that this one is a RAW file, it will automatically open into a screen like this one. If I tap on the adjust button on the toolbar at the bottom of the screen with one finger, then a flyout menu will appear. The options in this menu are very similar to the choices that we see in Snapseed's normal Tune Image Tools menu. And I'll come back to this one in a minute, but first, let me show you one of the biggest differences between raw processing and our ordinary everyday stuff. To show you one of the greatest advantages to work with your camera's raw sensor data, I'm going to tap on this white balance icon. In here, we get the chance to change the color of our photo. That's what white balance means in digital photography. But because this is a RAW file, we get to do this with far more flexibility than anywhere else in Snapseed. White balance repairs are one of the places where working with RAW files is the most advantageous. Let me show you what I mean. When I took this photo, I had the settings all wrong on my camera. And so the results that you see here came out with a super unrealistic blue color cast. Fortunately, I can fix this mistake just by tapping on one of these other white balance buttons. I'll start with auto. That's better, but it was twilight when I shot this photo, so now this seems too warm. If I tap on the sunny daylight white balance button, this looks a little closer to my eye saw, but now eh, it's not quite right, maybe a little too blue. Let's try cloudy. Ooh, now things look perfect. To show you what a difference this has made, I'm going to press and hold one finger against the screen here to show you a before and after. Of course, there's a lot more that we could do here to fine tune this image, but let's pretend that this photo is perfect at this point. Once I'm done with my raw processing in Snapseed, all that I need to do is to tap on this big check mark in the far right edge of the toolbar. That will return us to Snapseed's main image editing window. And once we're here, I could use any of Snapseed's normal tools and filters to fine tune my photo. To keep this demo moving though, I'm not going to do any additional work at this point, but I am going to tap down here at the bottom to save my work. Now, because this was a raw file, Snapseed will save a separate copy that I could use for other developments. This last part is important because if you don't save your work, then you'll have to go back and make all your raw adjustments over again if you want to resume editing a copy of this photo at a later date. Let's do another one because the ability to shift the white balance around is such powerful stuff. To load up my next image, I'm going to tap on the word open in the upper left corner. This time, I'm going to choose a photo from a friend's wedding. And once again, it will take us right into the raw development tools. Overall, I think this image looks pretty good, but the lights in this church are giving all of the wedding party a yellowish color cast. To fix that, I'm going to tap on the white balance button again. And of course, I could try auto here or one of the other presets. And on most images, those options work really well. But in this case, there's actually something in my photo that is supposed to be white. There are actually lots of things in here, but it's the bride's dress in a photo like this that's the most telling. So to set a custom white balance using the bride's dress, I'm going to tap here to launch the color picker tool. Next, I'm going to drag this loop with the crosshair in the middle around using one finger until I find an area of her dress that's not in heavy shadow or too bright, somewhere about there. As I move this one around, Snapseed is analyzing the area underneath that little crosshair and automatically adjusting the mix of blue and yellow or green and magenta light to try and make the area that I sample neutral. Notice that if I drag this crosshair out over something other than white, we get some pretty strange results. I'll put this guy back about here, I think. And then I'll tap on the color picker tool icon again to turn this one off. When I press and hold one finger against the screen here, notice how that yellow color cast goes away and my wedding party looks human again. I'm pleased with the color, but now this image is a little too dark. So now I'm going to tap on the adjust icon in the bottom center of the toolbar. Next, I'm going to work my way down through this list and make this image look as good as I can, just like I usually would using any of these tools in Snapseed's image adjust tools menu. 
In this case, I'll bring the exposure up. Next, I'll swipe my finger vertically to move to the highlights. Here, I think I'll take them down just a little. That's a left swipe. I'll swipe vertical again, go to shadows, swipe right to bring that value way up. Swipe vertical again, add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of structure. Okay, now I'll press and hold once more on the before and after icon, which is hiding up here, so that you can see what we started with and where we are now. Nice. I'm going to tap on the check mark in the bottom right of the toolbar to commit these changes, and then I'll save my work. Let me show you one more example that illustrates just how powerful all of these raw processing tools can be. Here's another shot from the other side of that lighthouse that we started with. This time, my photo is a little dark, it's low in saturation, and I think the colors are just not quite right. So this time, the first thing I'm going to do is to tap on the word adjust to bring out our primary raw development tools menu. Next, I'll swipe with my finger from right to left to change the settings for any of these controls and up or down on the screen to move from one setting to another. Bring the shadows out a little. Add a whole bunch of contrast. Add a little structure. Add a bit of saturation. Now, the overall image looks pretty good, but I'm not thrilled with the color. I could jump over the white balance tool, like we've been doing in the past two examples. But the truth is that everything that you do in here simply changes these two sliders, the temperature and the tint, down at the bottom. The truth is that the white balance tool, the feature I've been showing off so far in this video, simply sets values for these temperature and tint sliders for you. So, rather than hopping back and forth, I'm just going to drag these two controls around myself. In this case, I want to make this photo look slightly cooler, to give it that end of the day feel. So all I have to do is go to temperature, and then I'll swipe to the left to lower that temperature value, meaning to add some blue into this image. Next, I'll swipe up to go to the tint control. Now this one controls green magenta, and it's easy to get carried away here. Way too purple, way too green. So on this one, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of purple, like two or three, so that the greens in the foreground are not so strong. This looks pretty good to me. Watch when I press and hold the before and after button. What a huge difference we've made here in no time. If you're curious, this is the advantage to shooting and processing raw files. The speed and ease with which I can improve the exposure, the white balance, the saturation. That's just something you can't do with the JPEG image. Now, I don't mean to say here that JPEGs can't be beautiful or that you can't fine tune them in Snapseed. I'm simply saying that raw files are inherently more flexible, which means faster processing and better results when you need to really push and pull things around like this one. Well, now that I'm happy with this photo, I'm going to hit the check mark to commit these changes. I could save my work at this point, but I think I'll add one more refinement first. This step has nothing to do with raw processing, but one of my favorite tools in Snapseed from Google when working on landscape or travel photos is that tonal contrast tool. The results we get in here are going to be subtle, but if I move these sliders around, I bet that I can make those rose bushes in the foreground really pop. Again, it's going to be subtle, but watch when I hold the before and after, how that foreground really has just extra punch. Nice. This looks great to me. So now I'm going to tap the check mark to return to the main menu, and now I'll save my work. Well, there you go. If your smartphone or tablet can work with RAW files, give this a try. If it works for you, then you too can make powerful changes like this from before to after in no time. I hope that you found this video helpful. If so, then please hit the subscribe button and leave us a like or a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.